Well, today we're looking at uh, Luke 22, 1 to 13, and let's ask God's help uh, as we do so. Father, um, these are incredible words that we read about Jesus uh, today, and we want to ask that uh, their familiarity would not uh, leave us complacent or um, just uh, reading the story and thinking, yes, I know this one, but actually that uh, your word would search, search deep into our hearts and speak to us. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So Luke 22, 1 to 13. Um, I want to read 1 to 6 and then comment, and then 7 to 13 and comment. So we read in Luke 22, 1. Now the festival of unleavened bread called the Passover was approaching. And the chief priests and the teachers of the law were looking for some way to get rid of Jesus, for they were afraid of the people. Then Satan entered Judas, called Iscariot, one of the twelve. And Judas went to the chief priests and the officers of the temple guard and discussed with them how he might betray Jesus. They were delighted and agreed to give him money. He consented and watched for an opportunity to hand Jesus over to them when no crowd was present. So there are plans afoot here, aren't there? Plans uh, being made by the uh, the, uh, chief priests and the teachers of the law to get rid of Jesus plans being made by Satan that spoke up the opposition to get rid of Jesus, plans being made by Judas to get rich as he seeks to get rid of Jesus. These plans are in total opposition to Jesus and his ministry. Um, The chief priests and the teachers of the law know the word of God. They have seen the actions of Jesus, his kindness, his miracles, they've heard his teaching, which they've not been able to answer. And rather than submitting to him as the Lord that he is, they are implacably opposed to him. What's perhaps even sadder is Judas, who has been in the company of the twelve, who has eaten and broken bread with Jesus, who has been in his company, has heard his prayers, has decided that actually he wants out, he wants money, he wants to hand Jesus over. All these plans in opposition to Jesus, and it reminds us that Jesus is not some neutral character in our world, not some meek and mild uh, character, um, baby in the manger, uh, nice uh, Sunday school stories and and that's it. No, he's the king of kings and the world is in rebellion against him. Satan has led that rebellion from the beginning, is still seeking to rebel and lead as many people with him as possible, uh, actively afoot in in leading people astray in opposition uh, to Jesus. And even the religious leaders, tragically, who should know better, are trying to defend their position, trying to defend their power and authority, uh, trying to defend their status and influence, and not willing to allow their hearts to be changed by Jesus. And sadly, Judas is there just for personal gain. And, And those types of people still remain today. The world is still opposed to Jesus. There are those who are actively opposed to Jesus, almost satanic in their opposition, even today. People are determined to attack and target and tear down at Christian truth and uh, churches and Christians uh, and this active opposition uh, to Jesus continues. So here are the, the one set of plans. But now let's uh, read the next section, verses 7 to 13. Then came the day of unleavened bread on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. Jesus sent Peter and John saying, go and make preparations for us to eat the Passover. Where do you want us to prepare for it? They asked. He replied, as you enter the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him to the house that he enters and say to the owner of the house, the teacher asks, where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, all furnished. Make preparations there. They they left and found things just as Jesus had told them. So they prepared the Passover. So as the Jewish leaders and Satan and Judas are preparing to um, deal with Jesus and get rid of him, Jesus is planning to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. Um, it's the time of national feast when all the Israelite males were expected to come to Jerusalem. The place would be packed. You had to get your place booked where you could do it. And clearly Jesus has done this already. But the man with the water jar, I don't think, is a, a kind of miraculous um, uh, instance of Jesus' foreknowledge. Um, it would seem to be uh, plans that Jesus has already arranged. Um, a man carrying a water jar was a fairly unusual thing, perhaps just uh, uh, done just so that his disciples would know who it is. It's usually the, the women who carried the water. And uh, Jesus has already made them the arrangements for this room to be used 
for Jesus and his disciples. He's thinking ahead, even in the midst of the great pressure, all the troubles around him, all the opposition, he's making plans for the Passover. And what is the Passover? It's the feast when the Jewish people remember that God's anger, God's wrath passed over them um, at, at, because a lamb was sacrificed and because its blood was painted on the doorposts. And it led to their uh, rescue from slavery in Egypt and uh, being taken into a promised land. And at this stage in Luke, Jesus is preparing to go to the cross. And it is all at the time of the Passover, uh, just such a powerful picture for us. And uh, something the rest of the New Testament picks up in 1 Corinthians 5 verse 7. Uh, Paul says, uh, for Christ, our Passover lamb has been sacrificed. He's looking uh, back and uh, uh, then in 1 Peter 1, 18 to 20. Um, for you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed in the empty way of life, handed down to you from our ancestors. But with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect, he was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. So here is Jesus planning to celebrate the Passover festival with his disciples, planning to keep the law, which we have failed to keep because of our sin, planning to ensure that he was that unblemished lamb, planning for himself to go to the cross to rescue sinners, to rescue sinners like the church leaders who were utterly opposed to him. Think of Paul, who we've just quoted, who uh, was um, a religious leader utterly opposed to the Christian faith, putting Christians to death. And then met Jesus. And because of Jesus' sacrifice in mercy was saved and uh, uh, made into a child of God and brought into God's family. Jesus was going to the cross to be the Passover lamb to save people like Judas who would betray him. And we quote it from Peter who did just that. Who denied that he knew Jesus to get himself out of a hole. Three times he denied Jesus. I don't know the man, he said. And yet Jesus restored him. And uh, he was graciously uh, redeemed because of the sacrifice. God's anger passed over Paul, passed over Peter, though they deserved it because of the Passover lamb. And this is great news for our world today. As people are opposed to Jesus today, there is mercy for them too. Even the most hard of heart, even those who are most opposed to God, most opposed to Jesus. So if you know people who are like that, pray for them. Pray that the mercy of God would change them. Pray that as Paul writes in another context, it might be said that such were some of you, uh, people uh, like Paul, Peter like Peter, uh, changed by the uh, grace of God. And that's what's going on in our world today. There are still plans being made to oppose God and to uh, rid the world of, of Jesus. And yet Jesus continues to plan to save, continues to um, uh, send his spirit, continues to raise up the messengers, continues to uh, providentially organise the, the, the meetings of, of people who will uh, tell uh, others of Jesus. He's still sovereignly at work in our world today, and that's a great encouragement and an amazing wonder that he should do that for such people as us who were opposed to him. Let's pray. Father, in all the busyness of this time of year when so many plans are being made, plans for um, Christmas generally, but also plans in the light of, of COVID and uh, um, vaccines that are on their way and the rollout of that and uh, so many other things going on, Father, we are mindful that there is a, a dark element in our world that is planning opposition to Jesus, those who are utterly and implacably opposed to Jesus Christ. We thank you that as we see Jesus at work, that he has uh, come into this world to rescue just those sorts of people, because it's all of us, actually, all sinners, all um, uh, lost in slavery to our lusts, all deserving your wrath, and yet... Jesus has come to save, and we want to praise you and thank you for that this morning. And our prayer is that there, are, there would be many who, though opposed to Jesus today, in the coming days, would find mercy and grace from him. Father, we pray for family members, perhaps who've grown up in church, who have uh, uh, turned away, who have uh, rejected the teaching, who deliberately no longer want anything to do with this. We pray, Lord, that you soften their hearts and bring them home. Perhaps we've not come from a Christian context, and as we've become a Christian, our Friends and family have despaired of us and give us a hard time. We pray for them. Have mercy, we pray. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.